Hey guys, hey, welcome to Interstage Window. Um, oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. So we would normally um, start with like a few things and like what we're going to talk about and da, 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 da. And I would normally be like, Hey, I'm Karen Terry. And here with me is Landon. Landon yeah, oh my God. <laughs> but um, ah, I can't even do the intro. I can't even do the intro. We have to address what, what happened. Um, so Landon, Landon, um, give us the rundown. What, what just happened? <laughs> uh, so I, I'll do it from my perspective this morning. Okay. Um, I have been waiting eagerly for the last, as most of America has for the last three days to find out the results of this wonderful election that we have on our hands and decided not to check the news this morning. And then it randomly came to me about 30 minutes ago that I ought to. And I discovered that Biden has become the 46th president of the United States <gasps> or has been elected to be. And then I proceeded to angrily text my family because they didn't inform me only to discover that it had happened 30 seconds previously <laughs> to that moment. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So, um, I'll say from, from my perspective, what happened, I did get up and check it this morning. And of course it was still the same as it was last night and everything. And, um, <laughs> And then I was putting on my makeup, right? I was put, doing my mascara for this and turn on my lights and all that good stuff. And so I decided, like, let me open Twitter. And I opened Twitter and there's this tweet from somebody that I followed. It was like 30 seconds ago that was like, um, it was, I think it said like, he did it, he won or something like that. And I was like, the fuck? So, <laughs> so I opened it up and I saw y'all, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania was blue. And so um, thank you for telling me to hydrate, Cass. My Powerade today is blue in honor. Um, I just, okay, I am so ready, y'all, to get back to a place where we are working on fighting for things in this country, um, you know, from, from, from a place of, uh, of, of a lot less fear, I will say, right? Yeah. That's what I'm so ready for. And that's what this um, election means to me. And, uh, and oh my God, everyone that voted, thank you. Um, because yes. now we are, now we are working on our country from a position from a much stronger position. Uh, and, uh, and I'm so excited. I'm so excited to be there again. I am um, overwhelmed. It's been a really tough week for most of us. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not been fun <laughs> and I am just completely, I am both for the first time feeling like, oh, I could actually rest and sleep. So I feel exhausted. And I also feel overly emotional and thrilled about the fact that maybe just maybe the chaos and pin sitting that we've been doing for the last four years, we might get a reprieve from. Mm -hmm. um, and then also recognizing on the other hand of this like joyous, amazing moment that we have so much work to still fucking do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um and absolutely. That's great. And it's great that we won this battle because like we need to win the battles and then take it when we do. And that's awesome and amazing, but also recognizing that like there's a fight to still have. There are people who are still being separated. There are families who are still um not allowed to be families and and there's just so much happening right now that it's just mm -hmm. overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And of course it happened 30 minutes on stream before I'm supposed to sound like an educated <laughs> being. Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, absolutely. I mean, and I just think about, I think about like when, when Obama was president, right? When Obama was president, we had, um, that was when AOC got elected, right? That yeah. was when Bernie Sanders got popular, right? So, um, so, you know, it's not over. Like we have to keep pushing. Um, I know, that that uh, that I love my country and I want to see us do better and I know that we can, um, and uh, and we're going to be fighting from that from a much safer position now. And I am so I'm so so ready to not be terrified to express the um, slightest uh, particular <laughs> political opinion. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that has been that has been something that is obviously like your job having to do with a lot of government stuff sometimes is like, you can't piss off your bosses. Right. And, and so the truth is Trump is was my boss. Cool. Like Trump was my boss in, 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 for all intents and purposes. And, um, and, uh, you know, and, and can't trust him, but, uh, you know, it is, 
it's going to be so much better, y'all. It's going to be so much better. Okay. Um, I think we're going to keep coming back to this. I know we are. Uh, I think we got that out of our system, though, and we can actually start the show for real. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> oh, oh, what is that, Landon? It's wine. I'm drinking <laughs> wine. I didn't have champagne. So um, just know that as we discuss the wonderful things of self-care and I tell you, fellow viewers and listeners, that drinking your problems away isn't a way to solve your problems. Just know that I, too, am a hypocrite. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, we're going to get into all of that. Um, <laughs> I had to get a tissue because, like, I can't – I just can't stop. Like, I can't stop weeping. Um, it's been 30 minutes, and I'm still, like, so overwhelmed. Okay. So, um, there will be I... lots of tears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. So, um, while I get the game going, uh, Landon, can you explain – kind of um, what it is that we're going to talk about today and I guess get yeah. us started with um, with favorite things, like for real favorite things, right? <laughs> yes, actually. Um, yeah, no. So for today, we are going to be discussing self-care and uh, why it's necessary, what it actually is, what could be happening to require self-care, um, kind of, I think we're going to dig a little into like, I know we just talked about the president election, but it has been weighing on our minds. And so we're going to talk a little bit about like what that does to us as a country, but also as a human being trying to survive in a time like this, mm -hmm. uh, where stress is high. Uh, we're going to talk about ways to do self-care, what self-care does look like, how it's been ex exploded, basically anything and everything about self-care and what you and I do in order to combat it or not combat combat it in order to uh, take care of ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, sweet. Okay. But so first, what is your favorite thing? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so before I knew we were actually going to have an answer to the, uh, um, the, the election, which is of course, actually my favorite thing. I had this whole favorite thing planned. All right. So here, here we go. I, uh, I am going to on Thursday on my Thursday stream, um, I'm going to show you guys how I do my manicures because as we all know, the correct way to consume my content is to mute it and just stare at my manicure the whole time. Okay. <laughs> so that being said, um, I would love for you guys to help, you know, tell me what kind of colors you would like to see. So um, Landon, if you could paste that link into the Twitch chat. Uh, I would love to have y'all's opinion, so please vote on what's what some of what colors should I I bring to the stream on Tuesday. Um, tell what, me, let me know. What, um, it's in Sorry. the it's in the cast members chat. Oh, duh. Okay, thank yep. you. You mean the chat that I didn't look at yet? Perfect. Yeah, that, that's the one. <laughs> it's in there. Uh, I just put it in there, like right before the stream. Um, yes, I. Am. Yep. Yeah. So y'all vote on what colors you would like to see. Um. And that that is my that is my favorite thing. Like before this all happened, my favorite thing is nail polish. I have a massive nail polish collection. For those of you guys that don't know, um, no, it is not as big or as impressive as um, as Christine. <laughs> Simply nail logical, but I have a lot. Okay, I still have a lot. Uh, I'm not so I would be a little concerned if you had a collection as big as hers because she gets paid to have a collection that big and you are paying for it. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Like a lot of the reason she has that big of a collection is because um, she's been sent a lot of it, you know, as like advertising and things of that nature. So um, so that's why her collection is so big and, and mine is not. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm going to do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. So that's mine. Landon, what is your favorite thing this week, aside from the news we just got? <laughs> um, see, I used to be prepared for questions like this, and then weeks like this happen. <laughs> My favorite thing is... Well, while you're I... thinking, Cass, it's not, it is too late for a Halloween manicure, but it is not too late for a fall manicure. Sasha, I have never painted anyone else's nails, so the truth is I have no idea if I could. <laughs> Okay. Um, did that give you okay. enough enough moments to uh, to gather your thoughts? Okay. Yes. So, um, <laughs> no, I have I have uh, started this journey since uh, you inspired it, Karen. Um, since our rituals episode. Oh. That you and Naomi started talking about rituals, and you talked about your time uh, in witchcraft and everything like that, mm -hmm. um, or paganism, and uh, I have been di I've dived deep since then. 
And I've really gotten back into tarot. And I've been reading a whole bunch of tarot over the last couple of weeks. But this week has been like great because it has actually felt I've been reading other people's and myself and I've actually like felt a sense of being like, I really enjoy this. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I love it. Away from it. Which has been really nice. Um, I think all of that stuff, like I talked about it on the ritual stream for anybody who wants like more details on my on my experiences with some of that, uh, some of the spiritual stuff um, that I don't think you necessarily have to be like some kind of true believer to to receive a lot of the benefits of um of 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 these types of things so i'm i'm so glad that you've been able to to do that and um and and find some relief in it because i think a lot of those practices really do help like ground you mentally yes and there and it's and it, and like you could be as the spectic as and i am as much as uh as you need to be and and but it is that like moment of being like, okay, I can focus actively on this and not at the thousands of things that I know I need mm -hmm. to do that I can't control right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So exactly. It's really nice. Yep. Uh, and that has really been something that is, has gotten me, um, gotten me, who has got what has gotten me through these, uh, <gasps> this really tough week, both personally and of course on the large cultural sense. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I love that. What a good favorite thing. I'm so glad yeah. you're able to get something out of that stream. <clears throat> yeah, it was great. It was, and it was, I'm very glad that I got to get something out of it too, especially because I wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, so it was, was a good like, crash oh, though. Cool. It was a good crash though. Um, it yeah. Was, yeah. I think Cass, Cass is hitting on why, why I said I've never painted someone else's nails and I, I think it would be very different um, because I'd have to do it backwards. So yeah, we'd have to do it like the scene from <laughs> ghost. Um, <laughs> oh, no, that, uh, too bad Sasha lives on the other side of the country, right? <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't in the middle of a pandemic, she could travel to you. It's true. It would be possible. Um, <laughs> getting in the way of things again. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Rude of it. <clears throat> <sighs> but yeah, so that is favorite things. And then, of course, you know, the fact that we no longer have someone in charge who is akin to other world leaders um <laughs> it's that's nice too yeah so one day sasha one day it's one day it'll happen right one day it'll happen <clears throat> one day we'll all go to landon's neverland i think yes please my god <laughs> i have this secret place on the coast of maine that everyone needs to come to it is magical mm -hmm. we'll have a big we'll have a big stream party there Oh, sweet. Yeah, we should do that someday. Someday we'll make that happen. Okay. Um, um, shall we move into into the topic of the week? Yeah, yeah. How do we want to get started? Um, well, I know we kind of did this a little bit, but talking about like what's going on with us was at least what I was thinking about doing, like mm -hmm. how we are, what's going on and what can we do to help ourselves when we're in situations like feeling extremely stressed yeah yeah um so, so oh sorry so i said um i think that i think that if we're talking about like ourselves something that i always have to keep in mind is that um and i think this kind of relates to the the news we just got too is that there is a such thing as um a positive event also causing stress right like i think that um yeah. that you're 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 kind of feeling your best when every when things are going like as expected and um and there's not a lot of surprises and things like that so i know one thing that i am trying to keep top of mind is the fact that like even when good things are happening it can still be stressful and it's still important to like um do do all of those all of those things that kind of help ground you and and doing the self-care and stuff like that um so right now while we're all feeling good i think that's really important to remember yeah and i it's like your brain can't process the difference it's not meant to process the difference between good stress and bad stress because yeah. all of it is stress. all mm -hmm. of it raises flags in your brain in the same area and then it causes your brain to like send things to your body and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, before this, like, I just also want to do something for everybody who's watching it. Um, 
I want to take a second to like get into a space of, of feeling a little bit more relaxed because I know with us being a little high tensioned and every, all this good news coming in, being, but still being stressful and being high, I, I want to sit there and I want to sit there and, and, and tell people to like, just take a second to relax the jaw on your face. Like just relax your jaw. Uh, take the, your t the roof of your mouth or your tongue from the roof of your mouth and just take like a deep breath in. Just take a second to breathe because all of us need it. And sometimes we all need reminders that this is what we're supposed to be doing is just breathing. And especially if we're listening to a podcast or have nothing to do, it's okay to just take a moment and relax and breathe. And that's one of the things that is self-care for me throughout the day is that I try to do that between classes or between moments, meetings, to sit there and just be like, okay, relax the jaw, take the tongue from the roof of my mouth and take a big breath in. Um, and so I would like everyone to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna do that now then, because I definitely need it. And you can feel yourself just like, Come back into yourself, the tension ease from your shoulders. Yeah. Um, more grounded. Yeah. Everything this week, like, I feel like I probably should have used that reminder every day. Um, Cause I'm, I'm sure that you've, that you felt the same way. Like you said, you've been exhausted. Like sleep has yeah. definitely been hard this week, right? Uh, yeah. Because with with the election going on i've had even more of an impulse like when i when i get up in the middle of the night to pee or something like that like i, I always have a bit of this impulse but it's e it's been even worse um to check my phone right like check my phone see if there's yep. any updates right and um and so it's been it's been pretty compulsive and of course that makes it harder to go back to sleep right because then i'm looking and i'm like looking at the numbers and trying to be like wait what did the numbers say before has there been any update like, i'm not totally sure because it's three in the morning and my brain's not awake you know, so <laughs> sleep has been harder and, for sure. Yeah. And I was going to bed way later. I didn't follow bedtime at all this mm. week, uh, whether it be because like Tuesday was the election and I was, I was in shock that the numbers were so close. I wasn't shocked, but I still had that feeling of like, man, I wish I was hoping that it would be a landslide. And it became very, very clear once Florida started turning red, that it wasn't going to be. Mm hmm. Um, and then it was like, okay, now I'm staying up till midnight, even though I know there's not going to be a result tonight. And then, um, you know, parent teacher conferences for me this week were on Wednesday. So by the time oh I got, done with, <laughs> yeah, by the time I got done with my 12, 13 hour day, um, I was like, I haven't done anything. I'd like to actually exist outside of the school. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so didn't go to bed that night. And, and that lack of following bedtime really does add up on it and then when you have extra stress weighing you down that exhaustion feels even worse and it's like you have this perpetual cycle of your exhaustion is keeping you up but at the same time you can't do anything about it because sleeping you can't sleep because you're mm -hmm. exhausted so that mm -hmm. makes sense yeah, absolutely. And I know one thing that happened this week, like this is petty compared to everything else, but um, for a lot of us, the normal refuges of like fandom spaces was even like overtaken because of, there was the whole like Destiel thing that happened. And so that was like everywhere. And uh, and so that space was even, you know, very stressful when normally um, it's 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 much more chill. But like everyone was talking about that and the implications of that. So if you all haven't seen it, <laughs> Feel free to Google, it's insane. <laughs> yeah, it, the whole history behind it and then how it has split the fandom too. Like it's taken, I wasn't, an, I'm not a huge Supernatural fan um, and I never really was. I watched some of it most specifically because we have a mutual friend who really loves it and yep. I wanted to understand it. Um, <laughs> and, and then like all of a sudden I was just watching it and I was just so frustrated because it split the fandom. Some of the fans thought it was okay. Some of the fans didn't. And at the end of the day, it was like this queer baiting, gross mm -hmm. thing that I was just like, mm -hmm. that made no sense with anything. And I was like, don't just throw bones to your, and it just made me whole angry for out of touch writers and all of that. So of course that adds on to it. If your mm -hmm. safe space is invaded by that, of course it adds on to it. Yep. 
Yeah, so uh, there was just like there was just like a lot. There was a lot in in the Karen world <laughs> this week, you know. <laughs> yeah. And um, and like also recognizing what else is happening in the world mm -hmm. right now. Numbers with coronavirus are getting way worse in the yeah. last two weeks. Uh, Maine, we are seeing numbers that have been quadruple what we were in the spring, which is not a lot because there's like 60 of us. And, um, <laughs> but, but no, there's like a million people here and we're talking numbers that are like a hundred, a hundred people a day, but that's still a huge amount of people, mm -hmm. especially when our big numbers this spring were 20. Yeah. Um, and so all of a sudden there's this worry and, and pandemic that the pandemic is surging back and that's weighing on all of us. And we're suddenly hyper aware that every person that we run into is is putting ourselves at risk or is putting someone else at risk and we have to risk assess that. And so all of a sudden when you start having to risk, risk assess your closest friends and family, you're like, what the fuck are we supposed to do? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I mean, COVID never really got any better here because we didn't do what, what we should have done with, you know, our yeah. lockdowns. But um, so it's still just as bad. But seeing it get bad again everywhere else has definitely been stressful. You know, I understand that, um, you know, for example, uh, the UK and Germany and some other places like that in, uh, in, in Europe are going back on lockdown that, that yeah. did previously seem to have this stuff under control. But then they don't anymore. You All know, the good news for that not good news that it's going back down on lockdown however good news that we're getting a second season of staged because of it which is a show oh. web <laughs> um, that has david Tennant and michael sheen pretending to be hyperbolic hurt people like hyperbolic versions of themselves and it's a fantastic show but yeah. we're getting a second season because london's going back into lockdown <laughs> yeah oh my gosh Cass, really that's crazy um yeah, uh, I, I, a lot of people are in that situation. That's another one of those things that's like, you know, get time off of work. Like that's supposed to be like a joyous occasion, but a lot of times, um, but it adds other stressors, right? So um, so a big change like that, even if it's even if it's like a positive change can be really stressful. You know, and right now on top of all of that stuff, right, that's going on, um, we've got our, our normal, you know, that a lot of people suffer from seasonal depression, right? Yep. So... Definitely. So, you know, if, if you if you struggle, you know, over the holidays, a lot of people struggle over the holidays because of, you know, issues with their family and things like that. Um, a lot of people struggle, um, you know, just because the weather gets darker and colder. Right. So yeah, the, sun, the sun is not out as often. It's getting lighter. Or dark, it's getting lighter later and darker earlier. Yep. Um, which is sending a whole bunch of. Uh, people's depression off the scales with the pandemic all of a sudden people that you were seeing outdoors for activities because the weather is changing you're not going to be able to see them anymore mm -hmm. because it's going to be 10 times harder because there's going to be snow on the ground or it's going to be raining or it's going to be below freezing and all of a sudden the community that you have you don't have anymore yep because indoors um, is not safe due to covid you know yep. and it's so it's like there's a lot there's like a lot going on right now um, and I think I think that, that that's that's why we really wanted to to do this episode today and, and talk a lot about and talk about like self-care and, and what that means for us, because there's just so much going on right now that can trigger that stress response in us. And um, and although and, and fixing the world is slow, right? Like, yes, a lot of this stuff would get better if the systems in our world were better. And I think that that's important to to recognize. But the work to make those changes is slow. So what can we, what, you know, so in the interim, we have to be paying attention to our minds and, and doing what we can and, and engaging in that self-care, you know, while we're doing that, that work, right? Um, so that's, that's, that's why it's so important that we, that we talk about this today. Yeah. And um, I think also to, like recognizing I think one of the first steps to self-care is recognizing and being aware of what this stress is doing to your body. Mm -hmm. Because if you're in denial about it and you're not aware of like being able to feel or be, or be able to sense like, oh, I'm clenched because I'm stressed or there's a knot in my back because my shoulders have been together because I'm preparing for like either to run or a fight, that it's important to be grounded and understand your body as the first aspect so you can know how to help it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, for sure. Uh, because this is this is all a biological response, like the biological response of fight or flight to stress, like it, it serves a purpose in our minds because it wasn't that many generations ago that um, that the stress in our, our lives was like a tiger in, you know, in the jungle going to eat us. Right. And so yeah. but there's no tiger <laughs> like there's no tiger in this world or or the tiger is such that it's um, it's not. The tiger is a metaphor. <laughs> yeah. The tiger is a metaphor like the, the tiger is not physically here with you the tiger is existential the tiger is systemic right yeah. um and so when that is the case yeah, it's tiger. your your stress response is now maladaptive right so i think that um you know humanity has been blessed to be intelligent creatures right and so we do have the ability to put in the work to to work past that uh that now maladaptive fight or flight and um, and that's that's really what I think self care is. It's the things that we can do to um, to fight against that natural fight or flight instinct when the stress is not a tiger in the jungle. When the stress is that systemic thing. When the stress is that existential thing. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and and recognizing that. I think it's important to also like say again that stress isn't just positive or negative it's positive too mm -hmm. like i am the most stressed i've ever been because i am doing what i want to be doing and not because i'm unhappy in the situation or that i don't like teaching but it's a stressful job you can like your job and be stressed at it at the same yep. time well you want to um, do a good job like when you really like your yeah. job you want to do a good job and you want to spend time on it you know and um and so you know that causes all sorts of stresses yeah, buying a house. Um, that's something that it has been going on in a few of my friends' lives and sitting there and being like, that's the one of the most stressful things that you could possibly do mm -hmm. is all of a sudden take out, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and own a thing that you are solely responsible for for the next 30 years and some and sometimes with a partner mm -hmm. um, that you then have to trust that that partner is going to be there to help you with this thing. And, and then on top of that, also moving and on top of that, also, you know, making sure it's the dream house of your of your choosing. And and that's so stressful. It's all good and great and grand. But like that plays and weighs heavily on your shoulders and it will cause anxiety to flare up. And all of those questions of, oh, my God, am I doing the right thing? Should I run from this? Is this really what I should be doing? And that's the flight in you. And the fight is like coming out prepared physically for battle. And your freeze is like, I can't make a decision. And it's all happening all at once in your body. And it could be good, bad, or ugly that's making it happen. It just, it happens. That's our natural response. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And I think all of these things, you know, because it's like a natural process, all of these things are true, regardless of whether you're, I guess you could say clinical or not. And we, we yeah. talk about like anxiety, depression, stress, and things like that in a lot of times, I think in terms of like, if you're being if you're clinically depressed, but you can experience all of these things without it being clinical. And you still I think we all still have a need for self-care and, and for helping ourselves, even if we are basically healthy, well-adjusted people, because we still all have these responses. Yeah, absolutely. This is not just for, you know, the depressed person or someone who needs meds or anything like this. This is literally mm -hmm. for anybody. And, it, and yep. studies have shown that everyone has stress unless you're like a psychopath oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure uh, i'm sure there's things that even stress out psychopaths <laughs> interesting report to do someone <laughs> someone show me sasha link me a study in the chat because i know you would if it um, exists right she would know it right <laughs> if anyone did. Yeah. um but yeah so stress is is a normal part and let's discuss ways to to take care of it yeah absolutely so um, um oh go ahead i was gonna i think the important thing is to discuss ways to not take care of it okay <laughs> so because of... so what's your list well, of I... things to not do well hold on let me grab my wine drinking is one of them <laughs> um no i think that uh I, no, I think it's important that we talk about when we talk about self-care because it has become a buzzword, right? It's kind of like it's done that same thing.
that like the word problematic did. But it yeah. was in a positive light, but that now has negative consequences for it. Yeah. So now there are like, you know, self-care days, which is good and great if it is truly a self-care day. Or, oh, I'm going to buy this thing and recklessly spend my money because it's self-care. Oops, I spent all my money on nail polish, self-care. <laughs> or yeah, or I want this thing to make me feel better. So self-care, who cares that I can't buy food or pay my bill or it's going to cause me more stress in the long run. Yep. Um, and But like we think of self-care as this immediate actions to make ourselves feel better. That's kind of what like I feel like media or mainstream has turned self-care into when that's not what it is <laughs> yeah i think what i see um online especially um because of course in in this what we're, we're really talking to you guys that are very on online like i know i am and i know a lot of my viewers are right um but and what i see online is things like um didn't feel like getting out of bed today hashtag self-care and it's like eh, that's not yeah. really self-care um i mean now <laughs> all of these things all of these things come with the caveat of like okay, if you want to spend a lazy Sunday in bed, that's fine, so long as you took care of all your responsibilities on Saturday, right? So yeah. it's, it's, it's not about just, you know, deciding, I'm not going to do anything productive today. Now, you don't have to do something productive every day, you don't. But um, you, you can't, I don't think that it's right to claim self care for that, because self care in a lot of ways is work it takes effort it takes thought and it takes practice it's not just doing whatever you feel like in the moment yeah. um sorry very very thick i just realized i'm getting to this point i don't know if the viewers have noticed i'm doing my makeup on camera oh That's yeah i need someone to pick a color so first person to uh throw a color in the chat wins anyway um <laughs> yeah <laughs> no you need to self-care is it's literally taking care of yourself. And if staying in bed all day, if you have 10, 15, five, one thing to do is not taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we treat it like it is because yes, you as a human, like, and that's where the like dichotomy of this is really complicated because especially here in America, we, because it's a capitalist society, we live with this idea that has been pounded into our head that time is money. If you are not being productive, then you are being not worthy. Like you're not doing what you're supposed to. Every yeah, like you're like you're lazy. Like you're lazy. You're not worth as much. You know all yeah. of those those things, and that's that's pretty toxic. And <clears throat> every yeah, exactly. And every single moment of our day, we are basically told needs to be dedicated to doing something productive. Mm -hmm. And so we, as a society, find it very, very difficult to take time off. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that they, there are studies showing that early 20-somethings have a really, really difficult time finding that balance of, you know, the work-life balance. The, okay, where does my where does my work day end? Where does it begin? Mm -hmm. um, when, when can I do this? When can I not do this? Where are the boundaries? All of that. Yeah. Um, and, and with everything going on right now, where a lot of work takes place at home, yeah. it's become now even harder. Right. And then yeah. if on top of that, you actually like your job, then you feel the pull even more to put in those extra hours, yeah. <laughs> which is not good. Which is, yeah, which is really, really difficult. And, and, and it takes, it takes a lot of time and skill and energy to First of all, find those boundaries, find what works, and then implement it in your life. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy thing. And it's something that people struggle with far out of their like 20s. Think about like parents who become newborns. They have no idea, or parents who become newborns. Who have people newborns. Who have newborns. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that happens on Facebook sometimes. I've seen my friends transform into babies. Like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, click heels three times with ask the wizard for it. Um, but yeah, so it, it's this like, how do you then balance this? How do you then balance that? And trying to find this balance, it's it's a skill that takes years and years and years that most people are not successful at, um, yeah. because mostly because our society continues to push us that we need to do, be doing more. 
Right. Um, but then I think self-care has been taken like to the opposite, right? Like, like because we, yeah. we, because we know like in our hearts that, that this is the case, that our, that our world is pushing us to this, we've decided self-care is like the polar opposite of that. Right. But the truth is like, you have to have both, right? You can, you can't just sit and do nothing and still feel good about yourself. I just, it's not possible. And we know this because, you know, I'm, if you if you have older relatives that have, you know, had a chance to retire, um, you know, that's wonderful if they have, uh, like, you know, their experience is like, okay, well, now I have to find new hobbies because there's not enough in the day if I'm retired and not working to make me feel like I'm doing something, right? Yeah. So, um, so I think it's, I, I think when it comes, when it comes to self-care, we just have to make sure that we're not feeling that pressure of our world so much that we kind of fetishize self-care in a way to where we, we make it this, like, this other thing that, um, that's maladaptive in the other direction. Yeah, I also, I also think that when it comes to, like, the laying in bed all day, this, this is the example that I think this pertains to most. Mm hmm what depression does is makes it impossible to make a decision yeah right it makes you immobile um and anxiety does something very similar but it makes it that you don't have any energy to do anything that this thing so part of that spiral part of staying in bed all day feeds that spiral because you're not doing anything mm -hmm. and i'm not and i will talk about the spoon analogy in in a few minutes you're a bored cat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, kitty. <laughs> Tell everybody what your kitty cat's uh, name is. This is the first time the stream has seen him. Oh. This is Sherlock. You want to come up here? No, he doesn't want to come up here. He's the black one. And then Draco's been around here a little while, too. They're um they're being assholes today. <laughs> uh, it, I mean, they're assholes every stream, it seems. So <laughs> We always hear them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so you staying in bed all day feeds your depression. Mm -hmm. um, it, it feeds that. So it's not like this, hey, I'm taking time for myself. It literally is giving into what your brain is wanting you to give into, which is not act and not move. Yeah. Um, and like I said, we'll talk about spoon theory in a, in a few minutes. But um, I'm not saying that you have to be the most productive person on bad days. But doing one thing means that you did something. Yeah. Um, and if you're only capable of doing one thing today, that's okay. But do that one thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and I think um, I, before we, and before we get into the spoon analogy, like another thing that I want to mention that I think um, affects us as role players and uh, and people in fandom and things like that online is I know one trap that I see a lot of us very online people fall into is um escapism right it's using yeah. um role play and fanfic and things like that as as self-care as tools for mental health and i think in role play this is particularly dangerous because role play is not possible by yourself right like it always happens with another person and i think if you're using the escapism of, of role play as your self-care you just have to be really careful about not putting your mental health on your partner like this sounds facetious, but I've definitely seen role players say like, please role play with me because I'm depressed. Please role play with me because I'm lonely, you know, and they might say it in more words than that. Uh, but, uh, but that's not, <laughs> that's not good favorite, for you. My favorite is when they blame you for falling into the depression being like, well, you weren't, I'm so depressed because you weren't responding fast enough. Right. That's and, happened. and I mean, that's, that sounds crazy, but it totally happens. And I get why it happens. It, it happens because, you know, they're using that escapism as their self-care and they're not doing anything else to try to, to help themselves feel better. And, um, and then it ends up, you know, they end up putting that, that onto their partner. So I think that's yeah. something that as role players, we really need to be aware of, like what, how are, how are we using, how are we using role play in our, in, in our mental health and, um, and are we too heavily relying on it? And I also want to sit there and be like, I'm an expert at escapism. Escapism is my middle name. <laughs> um. I mean, what are we all here for? Right. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I love to avoid things. Um, by diving into a fictional realm or by doing something else entirely. Um, right. But it, it is that important, like, you have to... 
Hey, Lunar. Um, hey, it's, Lunar. It's oh my gosh. <laughs> that you, you exist in the here and now. And part of self-care is taking responsibility for that. Mm -hmm. It's not for putting it on other people. It's not for, it's also not looking for other people to solve it. And we'll get into like asking for help and how, how you can relate to other people when you are down and need self-care. Um, but it is, it is not their responsibility to get you out of that. It's self-care. It's not looking for someone else to fix it. Fix it. Mm -hmm. Hi, Winnie. Hey, Winnie. So glad you joined us today. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Okay, I think that's basically everything I wanted to say before you shared the spoon analogy. So this is something yeah. that a lot of you probably have heard before, a lot of you probably know. But for those that haven't, um, Landon, take us through what the spoon analogy is. So the spoon analogy actually started for um, people with physical disabilities mm -hmm. to to relate to people who are not disabled, um, a, a metaphor on understanding their physical, where their physical limits are. And basically the idea is, is that you have a drawer of silverware and in that drawer of silverware, you have spoons and those spoons are obviously spoons and tools that you can be used to drink soup, but those spoons are limited. You only have a certain amount of spoons. And so the whole concept is, is that taking a shower might require one spoon. If you have 10 spoons throughout the day, taking a shower might require one spoon. Going to work might require four spoons. So you've already been through five of the spoons. Doing the dishes might require two spoons. So you have seven of the spoons used. Um, doing laundry might require two spoons. That's nine. And then cooking dinner, or no, let's do... Um, I don't know, vacuuming the floor might require one spoon. You've used all 10 of your spoons today. How are you supposed to cook dinner? Mm -hmm. um, you don't have any spoons left to do it. And so as a disabled person, you need to be able to plan out accordingly your spoons. And part of that is understanding um, how understanding like waking up and understanding, oh, today is going to be a 10 spoon day or today is going to be a 25 spoon day. Mm -hmm. Um, and from there you can, you can then distribute your spoons, how you see them. There are ways to gain spoons. Um, like maybe you have a certain person that you really like and that person energizes you. So seeing them gives you a spoon or inspires you to do stuff or says that you can do stuff. So you get spoons. Um, and like I said, it was originally to do like physical actions, but it has the mental health. Uh, community has certainly taken this metaphor in stride and kind of have has adapted it to themselves mm -hmm. so that an understanding of being like I don't have the spoons or ability to do certain tasks a hundred percent something that might be easy for someone else might take me two spoons mm -hmm. um Waking Whereas like if, if a, like an able-bodied person taking a shower is like, yeah. you know, one eighth of a spoon, it takes like no effort. But if you suffer from chronic pain, taking a shower probably takes like a whole spoon, right? Exactly. Um, yeah. So that's, that's, that's essentially how, how that works. And you'll see yeah. this online all the time because the mental health community has adopted it. You see like people say things like, oh, I don't have enough spoons for that today or things like of that nature. Um, and so that's what that means. Yeah, exactly. And it's the it's the recognizing and, and distribute of distribute distributing your energy physical for for uh, people who do who are disability who have disabilities, physical disabilities and uh, mental energy wise for those of you that have uh, mental disabilities or mm -hmm. um, like depression, anxiety, all of that. Yep. Um, and <laughs> and people have I mean, like most things that hit mainstream the meaning has kind of diminished people say it with like oh i just don't have the spoons for that today not really knowing the history not really understanding what it is but the concept at its core is still the same mm -hmm. which is why i'm cool with sharing it um that yeah sometimes you wake up and you look in your drawer and you go wow i only have three spoons today what am i going to do with these three spoons mm -hmm. i can either cook dinner i could either take a shower or I could do this, or I could go to work. <laughs> Those are the options. <laughs> and there are no other options because then I will run out of spoons. <laughs> and then I will not be able to do it. Yeah. Um, 
and and knowing yourself and then being able to say that is good mm -hmm. um and so using that spoon analogy can sometimes let people into where you're at what your head is where you're feeling um and what you need and what you need um, yeah. Lunar says connect with my community. Absolutely. Yeah, like I said, it, please do. You probably Google something that will share it much better than what I what I said. Um, because there's also a metaphor including soup. But <laughs> I was like, that's too complicated right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just wasn't pertinent, um, right? And we don't want to spend like you could you could spend like a whole a whole thing talking about the spoon analogy and how it can apply and how it's how useful a metaphor it is and stuff like that. But we just wanted to get everybody give everybody an idea because I think when it comes to self care it's a really it's a really good way to frame things inside your mind when you know you're having a bad mental health day um and yeah. so in that way i think it's useful for for us even if you're not even if your issues are not clinical right like if you're suffering right now kind of thinking about it in that way i think is a helpful framing metaphor so that you can can kind of like I guess feel okay with feeling bad <laughs> if that makes yeah. sense um so yeah and and communicating it with with the people around you if they understand the spoon metaphor you sitting there and being like hey i'm having a bad mental health day that like explaining that might be a lot but if they understand the spoon metaphor you could just say i don't have enough spoons for that yeah and i think it works or, a little bit better than than just like the typical saying you know oh i don't have the energy for that today because at least in my experience when you when you say that you're often met with well it's not that hard what do you mean you know and stuff like that yeah oh my gosh Hey, Winnie, oh. thank you so much for subscribing, um, for using your Prime. Uh, we, If you guys have your Discord, I'll just say this really quick. If you guys have your Discord hooked up to uh, to your Prime account, like if you have one, or sorry, not Discord, if you have your Twitch hooked up to your Prime account, if you have one, you get a free subscription out of it. So that's what Winnie just did. Thank you so much. Um, and welcome, Groot. Uh, I'm so happy for you for you to join us. If you like what you hear, please don't forget to uh, click follow down below. Okay, sorry, I just wanted to say that real quick. Make sure that when How you f <laughs> dare you continue to promote yourself and your work? Oh my God. Well, I'm just you know, thank you, Winnie. Basically, y'all don't have to do that, right? So I'm always excited when somebody does. Oh, thank you so much for following, Groot. <clears throat> okay, so what were we saying? Okay, bring up the spoon analogy. Yeah. yeah, so so I just think I think it's a useful framing device. And I know for me as a writer and as a role player, thinking of things metaphorically often helps my brain wrap around like wrap around my own understanding of myself. So, yeah. And it's. I, oh, and the, you were saying about like energy and a lot of people also take um, it personally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't have enough energy for me yeah people take that as like what do you mean it's not it's either not that hard or what do you mean you don't have enough to do that or what do you mean that like i'm not i'm not like, one of those people who give you energy How right dare it's like you? oh but why aren't you prioritizing me aren't i important to you you know like you get that type of stuff back and it's just not oh it's not it's no good <laughs> it's not it's not good. And like, I can't even fault people who, uh, who like feel <laughs> victimized. Oh, that's a bad word for it. But it, I mean, maybe not, maybe, maybe not as intense as that. Yeah. Feel insulted by that. Like, I think feel that's, insulted by that. yeah, I can't blame them. It's but a very natural time, reaction, but it's not fair. <laughs> yeah. At the same time. But if you sit there and you go, I'm just haven't like sitting there. And, and like I said, it's maybe it takes a spoon in your mental, like, energy if you don't like to let people in or this is a person that you're not really comfortable sharing where your situation is it might take an entire spoon to share with them mm -hmm. why it is you're feeling bad um and so sitting there and just being like i just don't have the spoons makes it a little easier mm -hmm. absolutely um, absolutely and that just makes everything that just makes communication much easier and it and it just it's code it's code for people who who might not be as a like who might who might not be able-bodied or completely like who are neurodivergent and it just helps out with that mm -hmm. absolutely um thank you so much for the for the cheering lunar very very much appreciate that love i love you guys so much um this today has been like the first like good day in so long that i'm just kind of like reeling from that still a little bit so thank you guys so much for the support today um yeah, this week has been a mess oh my god <laughs> like, to, to I... say the least <clears throat> 
Um, so, so, okay. Sure. So with, with all of that said, I feel like we've done a good job at this point of describing what self-care is, what self-care isn't, some ways that you can talk about it to kind of help with all of this stuff. Um, but, uh, but you had shared with me when we were discussing this episode, this game that you play called the sighing game. So I was hoping yeah. you could teach us the sighing this, game. No, I mean, this is not a game that I can teach. This is a game that I implement at school because I, I don't know how many of you guys, I mean, obviously Karen, you, you're a teacher, but, yeah, but um, I don't deal with kids. I deal with adults. They're a little bit easier. <laughs> you're teaching the same thing over and over again, and you're just not having a great day. And and especially with kids and the schedule that we have now, I have no time. I, I have kids from 8.30 to 2 nonstop. I don't get a bathroom break. We don't eat lunch separately. I eat lunch with them. Um, so, like, it, it is nonstop because of the condensed days. That's not normally how schools are, but that is that is what this year is. is. Oh God, uh, I can't even imagine. That, like, only, the only break I get is walking across the hall, like literally just across the hall, not even like down the hall across it, uh, wheeling my cart into the next class. That is the only 30, like not even 30 seconds, 10 seconds I get without children. Oh my gosh. Um, And there was this one Thursday that I just, I was, it was end of block two, the, the STEM for me, I'm not a science brain. <laughs> If you didn't hear the whole story, it's fine. It's it's a very long story. I am not a math and science person. I'm teaching math and science. Yeah, that's um, the short version, right? <laughs> <laughs> go go look at go which episode? I don't remember which episode we talked about that, but it's one of the past interstage window episodes. Just go watch them all. You'll find it. <laughs> yeah, you'll see it. You'll see the whole freaking mess of the story, um, or at least or at least slightly longer than that. Mm -hmm. um, and I am. Um, so I'm teaching math and science. It had been the two science classes that I teach. And I just, I was, I was understanding it, but to the concept that I'm an adult and I've already learned these things. I understand what matter is and they weren't getting it. And I, because I understand it, have a hard time because I'm still learning how to communicate facts and things and, and ideas that I don't even fully understand to kids who don't understand it at all <laughs> and trying to be like, okay, how do you communicate this? And it's a lot of struggle and I was feeling very, very hard on myself and very frustrated and I just needed to breathe. And so then I sold my third block kids on this game called the sighing game. And it was an excuse for deep breaths because I was like, I need to take a deep breath, but I also know if I go sit in the corner of the room for 30 seconds to take deep breaths, the, the kid, I won't, I'll be stressed. Right, <laughs> so and that's because that's gonna look great in front of the kids, right? <laughs> Yeah. And I was like, okay, guys, we're going to play the science game and we're going to play this every Thursday from now on. I'm making this up on the spot. And they go, what's the science game? And I go, okay, so what happens is you take a deep breath and then you let out a little sigh. Okay. So... And then you keep doing that. Yeah. So you take in a breath and then you let out a little sigh. And we get eight breaths and each sigh has to get louder and louder and more dramatic as it goes on. Oh my God. <laughs> so you, you are like, you could fall on the floor sighing and like you could add a little eye roll at like side number three or things like this. And it was just this thing that I'm like, I'm going to make these children take a deep breath because I need to relax, but they also need to relax. And now it is their favorite game to play. They, I, I love I this. I teach, uh, in total, I teach six classes um, because I have two teams, like you said, long story. Um, we do one team on Thursdays, we do one team on Friday, and every single class is just so excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it and honestly, it, like, it honestly sounds like the most fun game in the world right now. Like, I really, okay, I just want to do, I want to do like my, a, what a dramatic sigh would look like sitting in this chair, right? So, if... yep. <laughs> so inhale. <sighs> yep. <laughs> like, and I just, okay, like when you're sitting in school, also, like, it's hard to sit and pay attention and learn all day. Like, that takes so much brain power. So, yeah. I can totally see why by Thursday, some of your kids, like, need the sighing game. <laughs> they just are a little wild. And they are within reason because that's the other thing, too, is that other Because they're not getting a break either. Out. Like, they're not getting yeah, a break either. Out. They get an hour for lunch and recess, um, but that's it. And and they're not switching classes. They're not switching te desks because of COVID. 
everyone is sat in the same spot because everyone has to be six feet away, sat in the same exact spot for five hours, six hours. Yikes. Um, adults can't do that either, by the way. Just as, as somebody who, who teaches adults, adults can't do that. So like no, expecting kids to do not. it is ridiculous. <clears throat> and I mean, so far it's been working. Um, so far the kids have been great overall. They do really, really well. Um, but it is hard for them. And so being able, and so I look at it that I, it, that is my like, okay, guys, get your energy out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so on Thursdays and Fridays, we play the sighing game. I love this. Um, and it's just, it's my favorite because it also means I'm guaranteed at least eight deep breaths every single class. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I mean, I, I'm, I think I'm going to implement the sighing game um, in my, in my work <laughs> life, right? <laughs> it feels so nice. Because like, that's the other thing too, is that like, that inhale and exhale naturally feels good for your body. But if you want to let out frustration, it's kind of like screaming into a pillow, except this is just sighing and you can just yeah. be like, and then you could be like bigger. <laughs> It'll That's, be great. That feels so much more productive to me than the scream into a pillow because I, I don't know if, if you've experienced this. Um, like sometimes you do have to let out some like anger and things like that. But in my experience, for the most part, letting out um, anger in that way, like screaming and, and yelling and, and, and doing that, um, it kind of just makes more anger. <laughs> like it doesn't make it I, better. So a I sigh sounds a way more productive. Yeah. yeah, I'm not a screamer at all, like as far as, getting when I get angry my my intention isn't to scream I, I close up so the idea of like letting out pent out information in like one scream doesn't make any sense sighing <laughs> however it seems to work for me I mean that sounds great I I, I I like it and I think um I think also like this is very similar to um to an anxiety exercise that I learned yeah. where you basically do like square breathing right like you breathe on I... a count and, um, I love square breathing. Yeah, I do too. And so like you, you, you basically, yeah. yeah, like you count to, it's like you do it on a count of five or three or whatever. Like it doesn't really matter. What matters is, um, is keeping a pattern and forcing your body to actually focus on that pattern. Right. So maybe you do a count of three, like you breathe in for three counts, like one, two, three, right. And then you hold it for one, two, three, and then you breathe out for one, two, three, and then you pause one, two, three, and like you do it over and over and over again. And they, this, it's like, it's kind of like a brain reboot, right? It's like, it's like if your brain had an on and off switch, like this will help you do that restart, right? Like it's not like a full shutdown and, 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 you know, bring it back up like you would do when you sleep at night, but it's like just a quick little reboot. Um, and I, I love doing that. And I feel like, I feel like the sighing game is kind of like a, um, you know, a, a kid friendly dramatic version of square breathing, right? Like it kind of makes the square breathing fun. <laughs> Uh, we have we have a little bit of uh, square breathing. Like some of our teachers do it. What makes it good for them too is, um, and I would suggest it for adults as well. If you're sitting at a desk or somewhere, uh, being able to draw the square mm, really mm -hmm. also helps that sort of um, mindset to just be like, okay, up is breathe in down is breathe out mm -hmm. and like drawing the square as you're counting might be a little bit easier for some people and it it, it has that relaxed state to it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh, would 100 percent recommend that as well with especially with adult square breathing but we do that with the kids when they square breathe yeah i love that that's so good that's so good I feel sorry for the kids. Um, one thing I know I used to do in my classroom um, for adults, because sometimes you you're supposed to, you're supposed to have a break. Like really, to effectively learn, you need a break every ninety minutes. Like that's just that's just what studies show. It's like it's the truth. At least every ninety minutes. Um, and so if there was a situation where we couldn't have a break for some reason, what we would do is instead of taking like a full break, I would just tell them, okay, we're taking a mini break. Um, and what we do for this mini break is you have to stand up from your desk and do five jumping jacks, right? Like, and it's not like, it's not like anything, it's not like anything that's stressful or difficult, right? But it's just something to get your body to do something different and something a little bit active. And that little bit of activity like really helps your brain kind of reset and wake up and, and do the things that it needs to do to feel good. Um, so that's like something that, that I used to do in my classroom when we had situations where it's like, okay, it's break time, but we can't take a break because of this, that, and the other, whatever. That's what we would do. Yep. And 
actually, speaking of, this is very much on topic. I am very glad that for this particular year, um, my school has been taking mindfulness for the kids into account. Like that is something that they are they are actively practicing and have in, and have asked all teachers to include in their classroom routines is to have like a form of meditation so the kids can also have this experience of either you know deep breathing breaking it up via jumping jacks or or finding another way to just like center themselves because kids are feeling the same level of stress that we are mm -hmm. if not more because mm -hmm. they don't understand the complexity of the situation and in cases like this um being naive or not having the information isn't better. It's yeah, just it's not. <laughs> it's just, it just makes it scarier, right? <laughs> it's absolutely scarier. So all of a sudden they're going through what we're going through and more and not having their whole frontal lobe developed enough to actually be able to process it. Yeah. So like having us implement this into schools and, and have these habits picked up at 10 years old you know, or younger, or even just a little bit older is really, really amazing because I hope one day that means that they will be able to actually bring it into their work mm -hmm. and their understanding. And that is an active way that we're changing. And it might be such a small and silly change, but at least we're giving them the tools to be able to do the things that we had to learn in our upper twenties. <laughs> yeah. Cause I mean, that wasn't, that wasn't something that, that, um, that we had anything to do with. Right. Um, when we were growing up, it was the attitude was like, uh, you know, suck it up, get over it. And, uh, and as we know, that doesn't help anybody. <laughs> oh, I just love being told to suck it up when my feelings are hurt. For real. I mean, get over it absolutely makes the, the negative feelings go away for sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I think, I think that's great. And I, and I, and that's, and to go back, I think this really goes back to like what I was talking about when it comes to self-care at the beginning, like what self-care is really about is, is the fact that our world is crazy, right? Like our world is crazy right now and it's gonna take a long time. Like the work to fix the systems take a long time, but these are things that you can do to help your mental health so that you can get through the day to day. Cause unfortunately there is no magic spell where we can wake up tomorrow and all of a sudden, you know, capitalism is gone and bigotry is gone and all of these things, you know, and uh, that, are, that are actually what's causing it. Like um, those are problems that take a long time to fix, but mindfulness, self-care, all of these things are things that you can implement now so that you can yeah. start feeling better now. Yes. Yeah. Put your nose to the grindstone is something I got told when I was a kid. Remember thinking, what does that even mean? What does that even mean? What? Cause it's like, it implies that you're not already trying your hardest. And like, that's just not true for most people. They probably already are well, like trying their hardest. Putting your nose to the grindstone also implements like some self-sacrifice, right? Because the grindstone, like think about what that would actually physically feel like on your nose. I mean, like, the, the best exfoliator, the best exfoliator is what would happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it would literally grind your nose down. So it's like this self-sacrificing, like take, literally take a part of you away mm -hmm. and sacrifice a part of what makes your face your face to get this thing done. Like, that's such a stupid fucking thing to tell our children. It really is. It's so I damaging. I was angry that that's what we were told. <laughs> but it's true. Like, that's pretty much what I was told, too. Like, you know, just just buck up, get over it. Um, now, I was lucky to have relatively supportive parents. So um, so I, I didn't I didn't get like a, a, a huge brunt of this. But um, but it was everywhere. It's unavoidable. That that message is unavoidable. So I'm really glad yeah. to hear that um, that your school is at least trying to kind of like not contribute to that because you know the kids are hearing it in other places so um so it's nice to hear that y'all are trying to not contribute i love that blue by the way um and and of course no like uh it, well, that's okay i mean blue was blue was the color right <laughs> yes. well this is now i mean this is the color so i was like okay this is what we're doing um yeah. but i was like okay full blue so this mm -hmm. is we're working on it a little bit but this is this is what we're doing I like it. I'm um, here for it. Says, Someone told me to put my pretty nose to the grindstone, and then I said, and then they said, then you would look, then you would look like a pug dog. I like. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you would. Oh my um, gosh. Yeah. So, like, that's the other thing too. That that this is obviously not 
going to change, I think, in our lifetime. Maybe it will. Maybe our children will have this sense when they're our age or a little bit older um, that they don't have to give up everything they are to make money or to be the most successful or the best. That, like, like the actual achievement is happiness. That is not the world that we currently live in, but maybe we'll see that in our lifetime. Yeah, maybe. That would be nice. Um, All right, or y'all, at least steps in that direction. Give me one second. Queen Queen woke up and she decided she wants out. Um before I do that though, if oh, no. if any if anybody has enough points in the in the little like um channel points in the spell reagents thing, I I added a thing for if you want to if you want to see the animals. Um so if anybody wants to see <gasps> the animals, uh, do that and uh, and I'll show them before I let Queen out. She's she's not like crazy about it right now, but she she's making it clear that she wants out. <laughs> Mom, I don't want to be in here anymore. It's not fun. You're being boring. Well, she was sleeping, um, so she was good with it. But she woke up, and now she's now she's not for it. Yeah. Okay. So Lunar wants to see the baby. So here we go. Queen. Oh. Oh. The cord. The, the cord's only so long. So sorry. Queen, where are you? She's like under here somewhere. Where'd she go? There she is. Y'all can see her little feet. Hey, Queen. Ah. Hey. What? Okay. Um, I'll let you, I'll let you out now. <laughs> she was sleeping so good. I thought she would sleep through the whole stream, but um, that's not what happened. Oh. Okay. All right. Um, Queen is off to go have kitty cat adventures. <clears throat> Thank you, Lunar. Uh, Queen very much appreciates uh, your spell reagents. She's a black cat, so obviously she's magical, so she's going to go use those to do her kitty cat magic. <clears throat> okay, so so that's kind of um so that was some of our that was some of our like physical things that you can do, right? As far as self-care goes. Did we have any other physical techniques or did we want to kind of move on to to the next point that we wanted to talk about? Um I think that for physical techniques, I think that we also need to um, talk about that. Um, I hate it. I hate being told this, especially when I'm down, but I'm going to say it because okay. it's true. Um, showering helps. <gasps> oh my gosh, yeah. Take a shower. It helps. Going for a walk, even if it's a five minute walk around the block, helps. And if you can't like even think about going for a walk, then stepping outside your door helps. Physically getting active helps. And I'm not talking that you have to go do a workout or anything like that, although that does help. Um, doing something helps. Mm -hmm. That is self-care. And even though in the deepest times and, and when we're the most stressed, kind of what we want to do is feel numb and veg out, the easiest, like the best thing for us is to not give in to that. Mm -hmm. um, to go step outside, to go breathe some fresh air, to go take a shower, to do the things that we don't want to do. Um, and it is, it's really hard <laughs> and it sucks sometimes because like, don't get me wrong. I have been there where I've been like the last thing I want to do. It just, it just takes so much energy suck to be able to go deal with turning on the hot water, especially because my apartment doesn't have hot water. So then I have to take a cold shower and then it's this, that, and the other thing. It's like, Okay, it sucks, and it's so much mental and so much emotional. And, and if you're ha and if you have a physical disability, it's so much physical energy. But do it; you'll mm -hmm. feel better. Yep. Um. I I think that yeah, and I also think that um, with self care, and and we can make this a whole other episode, so we do, I won't get into it that huge. But also be aware of how you are also punishing yourself mm. um, because you are in a bad spot not all self-harm looks like how self-harm looks like in the media yeah that's self -harm true. Is not wearing a jacket it can be spending money recklessly all of which can be <laughs> under the umbrella or disguised as this hyperbolized self-care yeah like um so so be very aware of that and 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 know that 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 the traditional ways of of being of of self care take effort um whereas like not taking effort spending money recklessly all of that kind of stuff can 
actually be more harmful and more of a way to harm yourself than it is for to care for yourself. Yeah, and I think that is that's true. Physical, as long as like physical goes, that is my last of, of the self-care. <laughs> yeah, no, all of that's true. Um, and, and like, I know when you're feeling bad, especially right now, like, and you're like, well, I'm not going anywhere. Why do I need to take a shower? You know, and, but it's amazing. Like I'm somebody that gets, that gets hangry. So <laughs> sometimes, yeah. sometimes I'm actually not feeling anxious. I'm just hungry. And I know that sounds like so silly, but like it, I've had so many times where that's been true, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. so, so uh, trying to keep up with those, with those routines as annoying as they can be, um, you know, anytime that you have spoons to do it, I think that those are things that you should definitely be spending your spoons on. Yeah. Um, also, like, if you're going to be spending your spoons on worrying about not doing the thing, I promise you it will take less time to less time and less spoons to actually do the thing. That's true. And, that, and some... Let me know. Like, that's a call out to myself because here I am on Saturday and nothing that I needed to get done this weekend has gotten done because I instead spent the morning procrastinating at getting done. Um, it is easier to do the thing than to worry about doing the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say that anybody that uh, that experiences anxiety, basically that is true because that's what anxiety makes you want to do. It doesn't make you not want to do it, but it makes you want to spend time worrying about doing things and then you run out of energy to actually do the things. Um, yes. And that's awful. So, so yeah, that's definitely something good to keep in mind. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, so as, as we've said, self-care is work. It's not just fun, do whatever you want. It is work. And this is one of the ways that it is. And it's, it, that's the other thing too, is that I, I personally don't think self-care can be, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Spontaneous. Oh like yeah. Self-care is just like, oh, I'm going to do this thing. Self-care. Like that's not it. Self-care is like, it's work. It's effort. It's, oh, I need time alone. So I need to plan out time alone. Yeah. It's, or I'm going to go to, I'm, I'm going to make an effort to go to bed on time tonight. Right. Like, I'm going to make an effort. I'm better. Yeah, I'm going to make an effort because I feel better now that I have started doing tarot. I that means that in the morning I have to get out of bed early to, to do, do it. Tarot. Yeah, <laughs> or, or I feel better because I run, or, or I feel better because of this. I have to plan and do that high priority, yeah. which sucks mm -hmm. because you want it to be this easy quick fix thing this thing like oh if i just stay in bed or if i just buy these shoes or if i just eat this food or if i just do this i will feel better and you might for about 30 seconds and then you won't yeah it's just very um, it's, too, it's a quick hit right like it's a quick hit and i don't mean to call you out but i'm calling you out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we're also calling ourselves out, right? Because when it comes to this self-care stuff, this is definitely um, an area where I'm not perfect. I have struggles. Um, I often don't do the things that I'm saying you should do, right? Because they do take yeah. effort and they are hard, right? Um, and I, I'm in a position, so I'll give you an example. I'm in a position where um, I really like my job, right? So I sometimes succumb to the pressure of like, I'm having fun working on this project at work. And so then I put in hours that um i shouldn't put in right like i put in extra hours and uh and and i know that that's not right like i should not be doing that um i'm paid salary so i should not be putting in hours i'm not actually getting paid for um you know there's there is a such thing as working too hard on a project right and you can experience burnout and then your creative energy is sapped and you really need that for, for like the projects that I work on, right? Um, so so it's it, a lot of these things, like I'm saying, do them because I, I have not done them and experienced the the suffering for it. Yeah, and I am, I am, I am there with you. I, yeah. uh, I'm full-time at school, I'm full-time at work right now. Um, and I, <laughs> I love to, I love both. I yeah. also love, this and doing this and sometimes it's easier to ignore the things that i don't love to do the things i do love mm -hmm. um even though it is per like it is helpful um it's not helpful because i still need to do the things i don't love to do <laughs> <laughs> yep. um and that i you know and that sometimes staying in bed i'm like oh staying in bed that 30 minutes might actually change my day where in reality i might actually just feel better if i meditate in the morning or if i get my cup of tea or if i don't spend money at starbucks which i'm so bad at by the mm. way oh is so that a bad 
that's a bad right one for now. you, isn't it? You're because you're, I know you're a big <laughs> Starbucks fan. <laughs> well, and like I made the mistake of knowing that on my way to school, and by the way, my commute to school is five minutes. There's a Starbucks between my house and the school. Oh, lovely! Um, <laughs> it is really lovely, but not for my wallet. Um, <laughs> and so now, now it's like, oh, if I spend thirty the extra minutes so that I can then instead get coffee at Starbucks. Oh, darn, self-care. <laughs> when it's like, no, you're just spending money you don't have, Landon. <laughs> or yeah. you know that you do have that you probably should be saving because you want to buy a house. I've, uh, I've, I've, I've very, I've been very blessed to avoid the, the Starbucks addiction. I tell you the way that I've done it though, is, um, is we have a Keurig. So making coffee is kind of fun, right? Like when you, I don't know, just the act of putting the pod in and everything, I find it really fun. Um, so, uh, so that's, that's, I, I used to get a lot more Starbucks back when we had a regular coffee machine. Yeah. So here's the thing like with that too, is that I quit coffee. Oh no. <laughs> up, until, up until I started at school and then I stopped and then I started drinking coffee again. And oh so no. Bad. So that like sucks. that's the other thing too. Like, okay, great. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. So all my morals, but it's fine. Yeah. Lunar. I mean, so. I totally get it. Like I totally get it. I love Starbucks too. I especially love their green tea frappuccinos like i mean and <laughs> and okay, you know but, so it. yeah back back to the topic <laughs> winter drinks are back though it's true anyway Starbucks is sponsoring us we have to stop talking about that <clears throat> um unless we're getting a kickback no more starbucks okay <laughs> <laughs> fair enough okay uh, okay so let's move on yeah what's the next piece that we wanted to, to discuss I mean, I want to discuss my favorite form of, well, like, let's do this. I'll ask you this because I was planning on asking you in the beginning um, and I forgot. So, Karen, what did you do for self-care this week? Oh, what did I do for self-care? Um, so I have a, a, a morning meditation that I do. And so it, this has been interrupted a little. I've not been doing this perfectly. Um, but because I've, what I've been doing is waking up and checking the poll results. <laughs> um, but after I check the poll results, uh, I've been having like a, a morning meditation, which is, is really simple. It's really just me in my head thinking like, here is all of the things that I'd like to accomplish today. And then I think about, am I being realistic with those things? Do I need to take some of those things off the list? Um, cause that's my problem, right? It, to add too many things to the list. And while I I'm, no idea. I know, right. <laughs> and while I'm doing this, um, what I like to do is, uh, is pet my dog. So that's, that's been my morning, like self care, like get myself out of bed ritual that I've been doing. And, and it's also helpful for my, my dog is, she's elderly. So if, uh, you guys, most of you guys probably know that. And so, um, she sleeps real, real good because her hearing and her vision is not what it used to be. Uh, so it actually takes some effort to wake her up in the morning. And so this is a chance for also me to get her woken up without stressing myself out because when she started like losing some of her senses, like it was just, it was so stressful getting her out of bed because she just wouldn't wake up. She would just stay asleep. You know, she was, she's like, you know, like that teenager that has the alarm that wakes up the entire house except for them, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's how she was. And I was, I would get so annoyed with her. So um, this has really helped me to stop doing that. And it's also given me um, a good meditation to do to kind of set up my day for success. And, yeah. uh, and, and I've not been as good at it this week because like I said, I've not been doing it when I wake up, I've been checking poll results and then doing it, which I shouldn't be doing. And thank God I, I, that's not going to exist anymore. So, <laughs> so that's my thing. What a good question. Um, what a good question. I guess your self-care thing has been the tarot, right? Is there anything else? Yeah. Um, I asked for help. Oh, oh, which I, I love that. <laughs> which is, I, um, if you do not know me, I struggle with that. Um, I have a small chip on, chip on my shoulder, the ch size of a boulder that thinks that I should do everything on my own. When in reality, <laughs> it's impossible <laughs> though. It's impossible to do it all on your own. Absolutely not. And it, you can't like, it's impossible. Like we are, first of all, we are biologically social creatures, which means that we like crave social and want other people to help us and build mm -hmm. a community. Yeah. No um, matter how introverted I, you are, you still need other people. Yeah. And I, but I also know me and I know that I crave, uh, 
other people helping me. I just don't trust them to do so because, you know, <laughs> issues. Um, <laughs> oh, but, trauma. <laughs> trauma. <laughs> I asked for help. I reached out to my friend and I said, I'm having a really tough time and this is what's happening and I feel like I'm breaking and I don't know what to do. And she asked, do you need someone to vent? Do you need someone to uh, hold you accountable? What do you need? And I was like, first, I need to see you. <laughs> Second of all, I need to um, I need to have someone hold me accountable. And um, these are this is what I want to get done. Please help me get there. Mm-hmm. And she's like, okay, well, because of COVID, I can't actually physically help you. And I was like, I understand. It's fine. Um, <laughs> but she would have if it was not COVID. Yeah. But she's texted me and she's like, okay, did you get, let's, what do you need to get done today? Let's do it. And then like, been my cheerleader and been my person. And um, I think that that is something that is extremely important part of self-care mm-hmm. that we tend to ignore is that it's not just on us. And that's what I was kind of saying before when we were like, you can't put your self-care or your expectations or your mental health on other people, but you can ask for help. Mm-hmm. Um, if they're not capable of giving you help, then that's on them and that's okay and, and needs to be respected. But most of the time, your friends will sit there and be like, okay, what can I do? Or what do you need from me? Yeah, I think most Um, people, most of your friends will, right? Like, um, most people want to help you out. No one, no one who is a friend and is truly a friend wants to see you suffering. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. Oh, you're breaking up a little bit. Um... Oh, you're not back yet. I think what she's saying is is nobody nobody wants to see you suffer, and so that's not yeah. that's not what most people are going to do when you go and ask for help. Um, are you caught back up yet, Landon? Sure. I don't know. She's still freezing. She's still freezing. I hope. Sorry, guys. Hey, there you go. You're back. Oh no, you're not. You're you're breaking up. Oh, okay. Something's something's going on with your internet. Um. <clears throat> Uh, yep, it's still happening. I'm starting a new garden, so I'm changing the the overlay. Um, I'm not sure. I think you're still breaking up. Hey, say something again. Hello, this is Landon, your favorite podcast host. I don't know. (laughs) Okay, yeah, no, you seem to be back. Okay. Okay. Sorry, guys, Landon's internet um, leaves leaves a little bit to be desired. (laughs) Um, no, what I was saying is that uh, no one wants to see you suffer. No one wants to see you do it alone. Mm-hmm. Ask for help. Mm-hmm. Um, and they will help to their extent. Yeah. To the extent that they can, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That is so true. Hey, Mochi. So happy to see you here. Um, yeah, I think that I think that reaching out is so important, right? And, and I want to, but I want to preface this a little bit because I think um, as as very online people, sometimes I think that we get the wrong idea and that we believe that reaching out is like tweeting um, to everybody or vague posting on your Tumblr or going into your dis- favorite Discord server with 500, 600 members and talking about how sad you are, right? And so I just want to make it clear, like, that is not asking for help. Asking for help is approaching a trusted friend, right? And in explaining to them what your needs are. I, I think sometimes we try to crowdsource that help and some spaces are equipped to handle this, um, but a lot of spaces are not. And I think when you, when you ask a crowd, you open yourself up to getting not really the responses that you're looking for. So when it comes to asking for help, I would strongly encourage you guys to to resist the urge to just essentially shout into the void like instead dm someone specific you know um try to handle it that way and i think you'll find a lot more success because your friends do want to help you they do right but um but it's it's hard it's hard when the way you're asking for help is like tweeting out to a thousand people right so, so yeah. that's something I want to make sure that, that we're making clear, because I think that's something that we as very online people do tend to do. Yeah. Um, 
it's I think also what makes it difficult is that when we're online, especially if we're reaching out to online other online people, mm -hmm. you can't read tone. No, you, you can't. can't read, like there's so much missing from the conversation. And also the people that like because I know and we've discussed this before, but online friendships move a lot faster than in real life friendships. On yeah, they some can. Level. Yeah. Um and, and it feels a lot more than it is uh for, for Oh no. A lot of other, other people. You're breaking up again a little bit. Want to know them. God damn it. Hold on. Is there anything you can do to try to fix it? I'm going to try a thing. I'll be right back. Okay. So while um yeah, while, give me one. Okay. So while she's going going to fix that, um let's let's um let's go ahead and kind of expand on that a little bit. I think that whenever we are having struggles like when we're having stress when we're having anxiety when we're having depression um because there is no tone through text sometimes what happens is that your anxiety or depression interprets a friendly natural neutral text exchange as hostile when it's not right i'm sure we have all either done this or been on the receiving end of this where you you do that that tweet out to all of your followers and um you do get back somebody that wants to help you, right? Like you get back somebody that wants to help you, but you you read their response and you're like, oh, that's not good enough. Oh, they're making fun of me, da, 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 da. And they're not, right? They're not doing that, but there's no tone there to prove you otherwise. And with the, the stress, you know, making you think that things are worse than they are, that can sometimes be the result, right? So it kind of just feeds into this, this negative thing, this negative loop that keeps going so i think yeah. you get a lot better results when you dm someone so even though that tone still isn't there um it's a lot easier to have that conversation and to try to not let the stress take hold um landon are you back do uh, do we fix I it we think hopefully okay. can you hear me yes okay i hate i hate spectrum i'm here i'm i am ready to make a political statement and say <laughs> how some people feel about compact comp um, comcast i feel about spectrum oh that's all i mean they all <laughs> all these companies have monopolies in various areas so none of them are very good so <laughs> for my internet to be freezing because i'm on a video chat that's yeah all. <laughs> well yeah <laughs> frustrating um but anyway you were saying the the vicious cycle of online i also think that it's really easy to forget that when you are shouting into the void online um whether that be to a direct person or on facebook um that people have other lives on the other side of that yeah Which you don't always know if stuff. you don't always know if you have their and, attention right yeah or if they're even like that's the other thing too is that i think it is so incredibly important that if you are asking for support and and going to for lack of a better word dump your situation on somebody else with like even if it's even if it's welcomed and you have a solid friendship asking consent for that is a huge huge thing mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't and think you have... only... oh, go, go ahead. ahead sorry oh it's like i've only recently started doing this in a friendship and i realized how nice it is to sit there and, and if she is having a rough day, her going, hey, are you in a place to hear this? Or me going, hey, can I tell you about this thing that's bothering me? Because that means that I have the confirmation that I have her attention, mm -hmm. um, but that I also like can rely on there being something coming back because if she says yes, then sh she knows that I expect like something to come back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and I'm not saying that like if you have a group chat or something bad's going on, like you can drop that at any point in time. But if you really want the best results, sitting there and respecting another person's emotional capability in that moment, especially mm -hmm. if they're having a rough time, is so incredibly important. Yeah, I think so too. I, I think that I want to make sure that we don't take it too far, right? Like when when it comes when it comes to this stuff, I think you can be really quick and casual about it. Like I don't think I've like because I've seen I've seen certain threads on Twitter that like make this thing this whole big deal that it's like and then it becomes like really like transactional. And I don't think your friendship oh, should God. be like that. Like I just think I, th I just think a quick hey are you busy? I really need to talk to someone right now. Like, I think that's enough because it gives them an opportunity to say, 
yes, or it, and, and then you feel better about it, or it gives them an opportunity to say, actually, can I call you later? Um, and I, I think for the yeah. most part, if you approach it like that, like no one's gonna tell you no, they just might tell you yeah. like, I can't right now, I'm in the middle of, you know, cooking dinner or whatever, right? Yeah, um, it'll be like, I so did yeah. this on the other day, um, where my friend texted me and she's like, I'm having a really bad time, this thing is happening, can I tell you about it? And I like literally was like, you are welcome to text me, I am in the middle of meetings until seven o'clock tonight, mm -hmm. um, however, I will text back when I can, um, and please get it out, but just know I'm not available until then. Yeah. And that, like, that's it. That's the communication that was necessary. But that way she didn't just, like, spill this long-ass text on me. And I get taken out from, like, nowhere. And then also that she, like, knows that I've read it and doesn't expect a reply right away because I've said that I'm not going to be able to reply right away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then everybody feels much better about um, the whole situation when that happens. Um, but I also think it is an incredibly important thing to also recognize that um, it's hard. It's hard to ask. It's hard to trust other people. Mm -hmm. It's hard to not feel like you're a burden and you are not a burden. If you need help from other people, that is okay. Yeah. Um, and you build and should build a community that supports that and gives you that. And I hope for all of you guys watching that you do, that you have that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just know that like, if you want to talk about your feelings, know that you have feelings and you are not a burden for those feelings. Yeah. Um, yeah, when he's telling a story about how a mutual friend ended up being kept up till 3 a.m. on a work night, talking to this other friend about their about their issues. And this, this is the sort of thing that like, when I when I think about this, I think about, um, like those, those things are fine to do, you know, occasionally, but I, I do think that, um, okay. So I'll say, put it this way. I'm always there for my friends. Like if one of my friends asks for this, then I'm going to say yes. I might say later, but I'm going to say yes. Right. But I, I think sometimes when you're very, very online, um, the currency of friendship becomes talking about your issues. Um, and I say that with a little giggle because it's so absurd to me. But like if you have found yourself in, in the situation where all of your friends are coming to you and you are constantly having these conversations, I think it's good to take a step back and examine, like, are you cultivating friendships that are actually good for you, right? Like, <laughs> or are you cultivating friendships that are perpetuating your mental issues, right? So if you're like... Um, I stay up all the time to talk my friends through a depressive episode. I, you know, and you're doing this like multiple times a week. I, I don't, I don't know. I guess it just, in my, the, the, the oh, thought that pops into my head is like, what kind of friends do you have? Holy crap. Um, and that's like the negative, right? Like that's the negative initial thought. But I think the I more mean, helpful next thought is that like, let's make sure when we are reaching out that we are, that we are doing it in in a way that um that we understand that this is an online friend and that there might be other factors that we are not aware of because we don't know their real life right so as very online people i think yeah. that's super important to keep in mind i also want to speak to that because i was that person i um hello we're gonna speak <laughs> to my trauma and not really but like <laughs> how i cope with trauma is i have found myself implementing myself to be everyone's therapist that is the role that i have taken on and have always taken on because i feel needed that way right and if i feel needed then i feel that the friendship is secure fun facts about me um but you know <laughs> now from experience that's not even true right <laughs> <laughs> oh it's not but i mean but it but it is like as far as that is what I did, especially in real life friendships and a little bit online friendships. It wasn't until I found a group of people who didn't let me do that, uh, that I was like, oh, okay, Karen, you, I can come to you too. What do you mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but it, uh, you have, you have that feeling of, um, of like a feeling important if you don't talk about yourself and that can be a very isolating thing because also when you do need to talk about yourself no one's going to want to talk about you because that's not the relationships that you've set up mm -hmm. um so keep that in mind when 
being that person who's willing to stay up till three o'clock at night every single night, that yes, you might feel needed right now, but that doesn't mean that they will be there for you at 3 a.m. when you need them. Yeah. I mean, they might be like, maybe it is a mutual thing and, and it's all and it's all fine. Right. But I just I just think we have to be aware when it comes to to being very online people that um, it's a lot easier for people to only reveal the parts of themselves that they want you to see. And it's much easier for those things to be concealed. Not that I think people are typically lying to you. I, I do think most people are genuine online. Right. But also a lot of people um maybe they don't know that they're doing this and so why would they ever share it with you you know uh so i just think i think when it comes to to reaching out there's like there's like this give and take right and um and when you are reaching out one you should do it individually like reach out to individuals don't shout into the void and two pay attention to how that reaching out is being received and it's going to benefit you to be a little bit choosy about who you reach out to right um just like in real life not every friend is is that that deep type of friend some friends are just there to to watch a football game with you and that's fine and that happens online too i think online sometimes we get deceived into thinking like all of our online friendships are super super deep because like you said things move a lot faster but um but there you know there are our friends online online friends where uh all you do is talk about movies and it's very light and chill and 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 that's and that's fine too so i just think i think that when it comes to reaching out we should always be reflecting on it and paying attention to like you know how how reaching out worked with particular people that we're doing it with yeah yeah um but at the same time, don't be afraid to reach out. And that yes. that itself is a form of self-care that yes. I think really needs to be focused on is asking for help, reaching out and talking about it, acknowledging that things are bad mm -hmm. is in itself a step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, especially if, when you are deep in it. <laughs> yeah, because if you're not telling anybody, if you're just keeping it to yourself, like there's a power in words, right? Like there's a power when you have to write something out. There's a power when you have to vocalize something. Like it changes the way that that thing functions in your mind. Like I really, really believe that. And and it's very hard to get to a place where you are feeling better without doing that step, right? Because you're not taking the time to let your brain process that thing if you're not turning it into words. Yeah. Yep. It's ugh, it's just so hard to like I I understand it because it's hard even for me. It's mm -hmm. hard. It's hard if you've been practicing it for years. Um, and if you are coming to the stream and being really bad at reaching out to people, I I am with you, and I hope that you find your tribe to be able to reach out to. Yeah, um, I, I feel for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, because we all need it sometimes. Like it, no matter who you are, everybody sometimes right and um and i know oh, for yeah. a lot of us we're not getting it from our real life friends and family and so we do turn to our online friends and um and uh and and that's and it's it's still necessary it's still needed you still need to have people in your life that that you can tell these things to yeah yeah um when he says it's hard when you have a friend who won't reach out or even tell you no because they don't have the self-worth or assertiveness Sometimes I want to throttle them into self-assertion. Um, I feel that so much. <laughs> I, I feel that on both sides so much. Mm -hmm. um, it's really hard to believe that you are worth something when you don't feel worthy. Mm -hmm. um, and the best advice I can give in that particular thing is to keep telling them that they are worthy and keep offering even if you get rejected. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I can definitely think of... Hard. I can definitely think of times I've had that exact conversation where like I find out yes. that there's this thing that's been going on for months and I'm like, why didn't you tell me months ago? And it's like, uh, I don't know. And it's like, you should have told me months ago when it started. Like we could have fixed it so much faster. Um, and I mean, I've done the same thing too. Where I'm just like, eh, I'll just deal. It's not a big deal. But I was lying to myself and it was a big deal. And, uh, and you know, and I, I let that happen. And I think we're all subject to that. Right, I think we're all subject to that, but I think in general, more communication it is going to be better. The other thing too is that um, everyone processes what their situation is indifferently, and if they have control issues, 
then denial might be where they find themselves the safest. It's mm-hmm. the first step in trying to get better. So they have a long journey ahead of them. But um, denial might be, they might, when they say that they are fine, they might genuinely think that they are fine. Yeah, they might really, they might really believe it, but they're not. And and they just don't know it yet. They're not. <laughs> um, I also wanted to talk about another place that you could talk about stuff that yes. I am a huge, huge fan of. Um, recognizing that it is a privilege, recognizing that not everyone can afford to go. But therapy, even if you don't think you need it, is highly recommended. Mm-hmm. Um, even for the most, uh, you know, well-adjusted human being, there are things that in them that are messed up. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would highly recommend that if you want to feel better, you find out why you are not feeling okay where you're at. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, you know, if you don't want to talk to friends about it, if you don't trust friends because you don't want to be a burden or you don't feel worthy or whatever, um, going to a therapist and sitting there and telling them everything. And then they also being professionals who can then actually give you advice more than two people on a podcast can. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I make no joke of it. I've been in therapy since I was 12. Uh, like, It is something that I highly, highly recommend and something that is part of my self-care. I don't have trauma to really process and a lot of my growth right now where I'm at is plateaued. But I also know that if I don't have my by, you know, every two weeks appointment, um, I, my mental health goes down the drain. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And that's, that can be part of your self-care routine. If you have the ability to prioritize that, if you have the healthcare coverage, if you have the money, um, I would highly, highly recommend it as part of a self-care. Yeah, absolutely. Action. And and yes, Mochi, you're right. Therapy is hard right now because of COVID. Um, for the most part, you can't meet one-on-one with a therapist. You have to do it like um, tell you know over the internet or on your phone or something like that. Um, and you know, healthcare is uh, healthcare is is really difficult in the U.S. in particular. So there are a lot of barriers to it. So so we give this tip knowing full well that a lot of people, unfortunately, cannot benefit from it. Um, I hope and fight for a world where in the future that's not the case. Um, I know that's not today's world. So so we say that with like a huge grain of salt. Yeah, although I will say that like um, in the last probably two or three years, there have been more places and more um, access coming to being available at a cheaper price. Yeah. Things like Talkspace or apps or uh, things that you can type instead of talk or that you can have phone conversations. For me, I'm very fortunate. Um, my therapist does telehealth. So a lot of therapists do if they're, they, some are not taking new clients, but that is an option that you can look into. It is not impossible. There are more obstacles right now, which is why it is a privileged position to be in. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also, I know for a fact in, especially large cities, uh, there are people who are interning to get their license to become professional therapists, whether that be a licensed social worker or someone with a uh, master's degree in therapy, anything like that. Um, All of them need to go through the process of getting a licensing, which means that they can apply and go and be therapists who are not licensed, who are still in school uh, at like nonprofit organizations Mm -hmm. who offer therapy at a very big discount. It's kind of like I I kind of contribute it to like beauty school, hair salons there are beauty school hair salons where all the people are students but they're like at the end of their students they've mastered all of the things they just need to get the hours mm-hmm. and so they do haircut instead of paying like 120 dollars for a super professional haircut you can pay it like 20 dollars to mm-hmm. get your hair dyed or cut or whatever mm-hmm. um therapy is very much the same uh, yep. and there's a lot in big I know for Denver, California, uh, Chicago, I, I know that most metropolitan cities have things like this that you can reach out and they will be cheaper. You just have to be okay with the fact that these therapists are technically not licensed. They're still in school and have a supervisor. Yeah, but I think I think when it comes to therapy, like you end up having to shop around for a therapist anyway, right? Like anybody who's yeah. been through the therapy process knows this. Like 
the first therapist you find is likely not going to be the therapist that works out, right? That's just, that is what it is. So I, I don't think you're taking much more risk with a, a student therapist than you are with a licensed therapist personally, just because therapy, and I guess hairdressers are kind of the same way. Um, cause therapy is something that is so individual to how you connect with your particular therapist. Right. Um, and Cass is talking about yeah. doing therapy online. Like, yeah, absolutely. There is online therapy that you can get. Like there's apps that will do it. Yeah. There's websites that will do it. Um, and, uh, and that's something that's still actively, actively going on. And I don't um, think that you yeah. have to be clinical to get therapy like at all. Right. Um, no. I've, I've been in and out of therapy uh, for, for lots of different things. Um, and I've never been diagnosed with anything. Uh, you know, <laughs> everything I've ever had in that regard has been like short term. Um, but that yeah. being said, I have had many times in my life that I have benefited immensely from, from therapy. Like I didn't go there seeking a diagnosis. I went there seeking help. Right. And um, and and every time they were eventually able to provide me with something that helped. Yep. And that's I mean, that's their job. Yeah. Right. And even if it is things like giving you more breathing techniques or for me, sometimes half of it is reassuring me I'm not crazy for being overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> like I think sometimes <laughs> that's how my therapist's job is to be like, no, Landon, as an outside perspective, you're not crazy because you're falling apart. Yeah, and I don't know <laughs> why this is true. You know, I don't know why this is true. I can have friends, like I can have friends tell me this and I'm like, yeah, sure. And then like, but a therapist tells me yeah. this and I'm like, oh, I don't know, maybe you're right. <laughs> it's like so stupid, it's so stupid. But like, just because the person doesn't know me, um, all of a sudden, I, I think there's credibility to what they're saying. Like, it's so yeah. dumb, it's so dumb, but it's true. Um, and so in that way, I think therapy can be really, really helpful. I agree. Um, it's it's a place to talk and it's a place to not be judged and it's a place that will only help if you're willing to do the work because that's the thing that we are discussing is that self-care and getting better and taking care of yourself is work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, that's just part of it. Yeah, Mochi's <laughs> pointing out. Work. Yeah, Mochi's pointing out sometimes making time in your schedule can also be um be difficult i heard first therapy session is like going on a date you find out about each other and decide if you want to see them again yeah and i think that is that is what it should be like like if you're in a privileged position yeah. where you can go get therapy you should kind of shop around and see multiple therapists before you actually decide and start seeing one regularly um because you know depending it, it's like it's so personal and you're gonna have different experiences with each one you absolutely should treat it just like you would um dating 100%. Yep. And um, don't be afraid to ghost them. <laughs> That's the other thing, too. <laughs> That's it's true. Okay you have a... You're uh, paying them, so you... After... You're paying them, so you really shouldn't yeah. feel bad about ghosting a therapist. <laughs> yeah, and don't give up after the first one, too. Just kind of like, don't give up after the first bad date. Mm -hmm. There is a therapist out there for you. Yep. I promise. Exactly. Uh, but also know that when you go into therapy, it's not going to be someone who constantly agrees with you. It's going to be someone who constantly questions you. That's their, and that's their job. Like they should be challenging yeah. you. If you feel like the, the therapy is like easy and that, um, and that your, your therapist is, is being easy on you and they're so nice to you, like they're probably not doing, they're probably not a good therapist for you then. Cause it should feel challenging and a little bit antagonistic if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yes. All right. Is there any final things about self-care that you wanted to say? We hit all the points that I had. Okay. Um, I think we basically, we basically hit on it. I think when it comes, when it comes to kind of everything that's going on right now in the world, when it comes to those of us who are, who are, you know, people that exist a lot online and that's where a lot of our, our lives are. Um, I just think it's really important to keep in mind, like, are you doing all the things that you should be doing to keep your mental health in check because you know even though even though biden has won okay even though biden has won and that means certain things are going to get easier the fight is not over like our country is still not perfect and um and we need everyone we need every single person pushing for the right things pushing for change pushing for progressive policies 
if we're going to make this world better. Um, and I know we can, but we can't do that if we're all, you know, wallowing in our depression, no matter how valid that is. So, so that's kind of, that's the last things about self-care that, that, that I want to say, considering everything that's going on right now. Yeah. Um, be kind to yourself. That's the number one step. Mm -hmm. uh, we are our biggest critic. We will talk to ourselves in a way that we would never talk to anybody else. Um, so be kind. Let yourself breathe. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to not be perfect. But do something. And if that something is going outside or walking to the market or um, completing one thing of homework, it's something. Mm -hmm. And that's better than nothing. That's right. Also, Lunar is right. If you're really sad, listen to Taylor Swift. <laughs> That's, that's, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, Lunar. Uh, I don't know if you remember. I don't know if you remember. Landon's a big Taylor Swift stan too. So you know. <laughs> just the entire. If you want to like just experience feels that are not your own feels, because you're like I don't want to like feel my feelings, but I want to feel these feelings and get it way out. May I suggest the entire folklore album? It's fantastic, <laughs> and that's, that's all I got for you. Oh my gosh. So okay. Shall we do a new? <laughs> uh sorry i you cut out just a little bit should we be doing a news article yes can you paste the link in there for me and i will get my browser right. going <laughs> oh, oh no. so sorry i just minimized everything and i meant to just minimize the game hold up that's okay like this that link won't work so don't so don't go there okay sorry for really you guys Oh, shoot. Okay. Hold on. Let me find... Hold on. I got another article just in the... In the wings. Okay. That's fine. Take your time. Ah! Uh, pressure. <laughs> it's all good. Is it? Yeah. Are there's no sure rush. There's no rush. Everything's falling apart. <sighs> I'm ready when you are. <clears throat> okay. Well, now you're just being, now you're just being needy. Okay. Where is it? Oh my God. Okay. Well, it was going to be this whole joke because it was going to be a link to the announcement that Biden won. And I'm like, I can't top that news. I can't do it. Oh, but now I well, can't find a link that will actually. Why doesn't this link work? Let me click <laughs> it. What, what happens? Because it's New York Times. Oh. It means you need to log in. Let's see if it'll load for me. I don't think I've looked at New York Times this any this week. So I think it'll load because you get like a free article, right? Before it makes you log in. Do we? Yeah, because I, I think it's going to let me read it. Yeah. OK, so we can still do this one. OK, oh, let's yeah. full screen. Well, All right. Just, I mean, it literally, I haven't read it. Oh, OK. So it this is it. That this is it. This is our <laughs> this is our good news. I mean, what what other good news could we could we have right now? Um, so let's see, Joseph I mean, Robinette. I didn't know what his middle name was. I've I've learned his middle name, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you though. I'm really freaked out about that. His first name is Joseph. I know Joe was obviously short for Joseph. Like I put that together, but seeing him as Joseph Biden, and I'm just like, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! So he got the marketing right whenever he decided he should shorten his name. Um, so he's gonna be our 46th yep. president, y'all. Um. I mean, this is New York Times, right? So they're going to talk about restoring normalcy and and um, oh, we're going to get back to normal. Da 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 da. Just just to make it clear, things are going to get easier, right? But normal is still not as good as it could be. Oh, right. No, and tr and, and it's not going to get normal. No, like, it's this not. Is the thing is, I was telling Karen before the stream, and I won't get too deep into it. Um, we have come too far, and too much has been done in four years. We have basically like. If you ever were in kindergarten and had and did the toothpaste experiment, and that's like where you squirt out some toothpaste and then try to shove the toothpaste back into the bowl into the bottle, uh, we can't do that. Donald Trump has shoved out toothpaste, and we can't just shove it back in. Things are going to have to change, and this is where we're at. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's very true. Um, I saw somebody do, tweeting about this, and I thought this was a, was a really good analogy. Um, you know that let's this is in the Star Wars movies, right? They they destroy the Death Star, right? And um, and they have their little celebration, their little award ceremony, and then in the in the next movie, the Death Star comes right back, right? And I think now we are having our little celebration, right? We're having our little award ceremony, um, but we need to understand that now that this has happened, it could happen again, and we have to be vigilant. 
right? We have to be watching out for these signs. We have to be paying attention to what's going on um, outside of the presidency, right? And I think that's where that's where in America we get kind of caught up. We get really caught up in the presidential election. But y'all, if there's anything that you can do that I think is pretty easy, you know, that's not it's not asking a lot. But one of the things that you can do is start paying attention to your local and state level elections. Start paying attention to the policies for your local and state elected officials. Um, that means so much more in our day to day lives. And uh, and the echoes of what happened to the presidency were seen over a decade ago in those local and state elections. Right. And we didn't do anything about it. So that's what I think is coming next and what we can do to try to um, improve our situation, right? And everyone can do that, right? That's, that's something that I think everyone has the capacity to do. Yep. Um, I, I also think that if we have any, uh, I'm gonna do this. If we have any- um... You're cutting out again, Landon, hang on. If you, I don't know if you can hear me, but you're cutting out again. Who are in Georgia? And oh, I can. Can you hear me? Sorry, say talk again. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, I was just saying that if we have anybody in Georgia, um, there's going to be another election this year. Mm -hmm. Go vote. That's there's a runoff. There's a runoff. So go have your voice heard in the runoff. Like, go vote. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, you're cutting out again. Go have your voice heard. Uh, I would like it to go. Yeah, she's disconnected again. Um, well, I'll say what I think she was going to say. There's a runoff in Georgia. Um, please go go educate yourself on the on the candidates and on the platforms if you didn't before, and uh, and go vote, Georgians. Um, it's important, right? Like it's important. Uh, you you cut out again. I think you realize that now, but I think you're back. Oh no, you yeah, muted yourself. I, I maybe we'll see. Um, but I will say in case I cut out again. Thank you so much for the stream. Don't forget to be awesome. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. Okay. In case I <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's wrap it up then. Um, yeah. You can find Landon on Instagram. She's land in Maine. It's like a nice little, it's a funny little pun, right? Um, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and uh, so where you can find me is, okay, wait, let's switch to webcam. There we go. So where you can find me is right here on Twitch. You can follow down below. Um, we do a stream on Saturdays, which is Interstage Window. That's the stream that you're watching now where it's a conversation with friends. Um, Landon basically is my co-host for that. So she's on almost all of the episodes in addition to several others that we have um, kind of rotating throughout. Uh, the other show is on Thursdays called Artistic License. That show is more like... Um, just kind of whatever I want to do. It's a little bit experimental. It's things that don't that I want to do that don't fit into other places on my channel. Um, and on Thursday, I'm gonna show you guys how I paint my nails. So please, uh, Landon, if you, could you paste that link in there one more time? So if y'all could please go vote yes, on colors. Can. If y'all could please go vote on colors, so I know what colors to, uh, to bring with me into the into the stream room. Um, and the other main place that you can find me is on YouTube. That's where I have my show Spare Room, which is my scripted show for role play help. That goes up on my YouTube channel every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Links all down below. And then um, then the other places, if you're interested, is my Twitter. It's mostly advertisements, but sometimes I do actually post like hot takes and things like that on Twitter. So um, then, uh, then, you know, go follow my Twitter. It's at It's Karen Terry. Oh, great question, Cass. Is it more useful for you to be subscribed on Patreon or Twitch? Where is more optimal? Um, Patreon is the truth. Patreon is a bit more optimal to be subscribed um, than Twitch. But the benefit of subscribing for Twitch is if you have a Prime account, you can do it for free, right? So if you have a Prime account, then you can connect your Twitch and your Amazon Prime and you get a free subscription that you can give to me, right? So that's a, to that's a totally free way. There's nothing like that when it comes to, when it comes to Patreon. So um, that's, that's it. Honestly, like it's whatever you're comfortable with, right? Because there isn't, there isn't a huge amount of difference, but it's technically slightly better for, to subscribe on the Patreon. Um, plus the perks are better in my opinion. 
<laughs> they are. They're great. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, good question. But yeah, I have a Patreon. That's it's all down below in the about and all of that lovely stuff. And um, and yeah, that's it. That's all. Thank you guys so much for coming to the stream today. And um, don't forget to make it a great day. Bye. Don't forget to be awesome. Bye, guys. See you next week.